Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. And this program is about the evolution of our consciousness. And I feel we're coming into a time where different levels of our humanity are awakening. And tonight's guest is very much a part of that awakening. I'm talking to Tom Canyon. And this lifetime is a blink right. in the cosmic flow. But for right now, we're not blinking. <laughs> we're right here. So what's your spiritual, if you don't mind sharing, like? You're channeling this thing, you're getting out of the way, and there's beautiful energy. But you, mm -hmm. as a, if you want to share, what do you do? How do you increase that loving feeling from day to day in that, you know, you're in the real world. How do you emanate that, if you do, it, I mean, if you want? It varies from day to day, <laughs> and it has to do with my mood, quite frankly, uh -huh. and what has come down. Yeah. And there are times when the moods are so strong that the loving vibration, the mm. appreciation gets lost. And this but just sucks, and so then I have to remind myself. <laughs> I have reference, okay, well, the Hathers say this, and Heart Math Institute, and also other researchers. Uh, if I go to a place of appreciation, I gotta find something to appreciate, but everything sucks right now. Nothing. There's nothing to so appreciate. Still Even this couch sucks. <laughs> God, what, where do I go to Poor find Judy, a fucking appreciation? Poor Judy, what a saint she is. <laughs> she is a saint, and she's my greatest teacher because you know you referenced something earlier. We need always somebody to call us on our stuff. Yeah. So that's what we do for each other. Mm -hmm. And but yeah. so for me to answer your yeah. question, it really does change from day to day. But the overarching mm -hmm. that I view that I work with is that I am evolving through my own layers, mm -hmm. uh, including the higher vibrational expressions of myself, mm -hmm. and very importantly, coming to terms with the lower vibrational mm -hmm. expressions of myself, mm -hmm. and not to split myself, but to embrace all of that with awareness and mm -hmm. do the best I can in y the moment. Right, no, it just reminds me of a line when I was interviewing Jay-Z Knight. She said to me, I have this idiot called a personality. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> but I'm just curious, and you... <laughs> <laughs> I call that in myself, dox, dumb ox. Yeah, but in your awareness, that's very expanded because you're bringing, do you see that the moods themselves can be observed without being indulged? I'm not yes, trying to psychotherapize no, you. No, that's, <laughs> yeah, so that's, don't. And it's the art of uh -huh. observing the moods, but allowing them to transform. Right, and but without acting, you know, if you're angry, it doesn't mean you have to hit somebody. I, I mean, if you're feeling something, right. can you? Sometimes it's good to hit something. Yeah, but can you but just observe it? Yes. Yeah. And and for me, this takes me back to Bell's theorem okay. and quantum mechanics. This is all related. We don't even have to go to spiritual traditions, although some <laughs> of them speak to it, like Dzogchen yeah. speaks to this beautifully. They're absolutely in agreement with quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. Quantum physics says that in the process of looking at small particles like atoms, mm -hmm. light will present itself as a particle or a wave depending on what the researcher is doing at yeah, the time. So, exactly. So if the researcher is looking at light, as a mm -hmm. particle, that's what it will present itself, and if it's, they think it's a wave, it's gonna present itself as a wave. Right. So, in the human psychology, psychology, the actual process of simply observing something with detachment creates a change in the neurological patterning. Right. And that is the power to self-transform. So I agree with you. Right. It's not easy, I'm not saying it's easy when we get into it. It is, it is sometimes easy <laughs> and sometimes difficult. Mm. Yeah, but that's the work. That's basically what you're that's saying the is the work to deal with and that. And my issue with those of us in, in the personal growth movement who want only what is wonderful and mm. loving and don't deal with the lower vibratory mm. fields in their own nature, they act right. out without their knowledge right. or they become passive aggressive to others. Mm. And I tell you, the spiritual community is full of vipers and the mm. acting out of passive aggressiveness like nothing I right, remember. because they're not, like we talked before, they're not willing to deal with the shadow. They're bad moods. So if they have a yes. bad mood, they'll just say, oh, everything's great, without actually going in and acknowledging, well, what are you feeling bad about? Well, that, I think part of that has to do with how our spiritual traditions and our religions have failed us. Yeah. Because they, many of them, not all of them, but the resourceful ones have addressed this. But the, the, the bulk of them say, this is up, the heavenly worlds are all that you want to be. You want to just move into this and forget. This no, is it's all, garbage. That's it's, garbage. Right. Yeah, yeah. So those who yeah. embrace that yeah. deny their lower expressions because there's guilt and shame about having something that doesn't fit into 
how they think they're supposed to be to be a good Buddhist or a good Catholic or whatever it is. Well, that's a lot of Eastern traditions also. They, there's that lack of um, that dark side. Well, that leads us to the guru. Yeah, exactly. So the guru in, in many of the traditions mm -hmm. is to be worshipped. But there's well, a misunderstanding. They'll take on your karma and you'll have, won't have to do That's the, what that, they say. That's, right. Yes. And then some of the spiritual traditions out of the East say the guru is your link to the lineage and the lineage energies flow to you. And it is, in my experience, absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. However, I think there's no discrimination correct. between the guru and the person. Right. When the moment when the guru is out of the way, he or she can be a conduit for the lineage that can go back right. thousands of years. Right. But they also have their personality. So a student or a chela, mm -hmm. a disciple, mm -hmm. has given away their power to the guru. If they have done that, mm -hmm. they don't have any discrimination. In this moment, Lama Dinga Dong Dong yeah. is, is giving... No, I've seen that over. I, I totally agree with you. They, right. They're giving the, the transmission in this moment and the next moment. They want to have sex with you. And, yes, and, and it's very <laughs> confusing for the, the student. Or and Because they, the they think it's the same thing. Yes. And, and it's an honor to be chosen by the mm -hmm. guru mm -hmm. to be in an intimate relationship. Yeah. Instead of discriminating what do I need and want as a person separate from... The yeah, spiritual well, of authority. course, so the, there's many scandals in India about that. The, the whole, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> but even in the church, you see that, you know, kind of abuse. And oh, God, yes. We need to be trained in what the personality is and what those energies are. We, we, we need courses in understanding ego development and um, non-ego attachment or bringing in these higher energies, something like that. I mean... I yeah, and for the... Anyone who follows a spiritual teacher yeah. who has spiritual power or in a spiritual tradition that is, uh, is a guru, yeah. there needs to be a capacity to be able to understand vibrationally the difference between when a correct, authentic transmission is occurring and when it's contaminated by ego infestation right. and fixation. And if a student is not able to do that, yeah. they're in dangerous territory. I want to give courses on how to know the difference. I mean, not that I'm an expert, but I've been around and I can tell tell sort of where those gurus or teachers go over the line and when it's like time to leave and say thank you very much, you know. Yeah, right. That's a good <laughs> thing to know. The other subject I want to talk about with you is the idea of this of channeling when you, how do you actually, you know, you're going to do an event somewhere and how do you actually call on these being? I mean, what do you have to do to get out of the way and, and or do they knock on the door and say we're here? They Tom. knock on the door and say they're here. And, but do you call on them ever? I mean, would you? If I need to. Uh, right. But when I do an event, yeah, um, it's already predetermined what, right. this, what the, the bulk of the energies are going to be. Mm -hmm. But when I arrive there, it often changes. The, right. the central nexus point of the, the beings that are going to work with are there. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes have the experience, and psychics have told me they can see this mm -hmm. when they're in these workshops, that other, the, the stage gets very full. With beings. With beings. And um, they line up. And so what happens for me, and neurologically, is that I enter a receptive state. So when a channel goes into a, a channeling experience, the brain but, has to shift. But how do you get there? How do you get to that? Do you do something? I just know how to do it now. I've done yeah, it for okay. 35 years, and I mm -hmm. know it's just like a reflex now. It's a brain skill, like learning how to type. When you've uh -huh. done it enough, you sit at the typewriter. You don't even have to look. Right, or actually, know, whatever. Th yeah, I get it. It's a, it's a state of mind that you go in, right. so you get there. Right, but the, the neurologically what happens is my brain increases alpha activity. Mm -hmm. So I'm more relaxed, I have inner awareness and outer awareness. I'm aware of what's going on in the room, but I have access to my inner worlds, and in the inner worlds, I can see these beings approaching me. You actually see them approaching. Psychic again, clairvoyantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Not physically Not seeing thing. them. I feel their energy approaching, the quality uh -huh. of consciousness that they are. Uh -huh. And um, they enter my field, mm -hmm. and then they give these sounds, and the sound moves into the room, and the field, the energy field, enters the room. And this mm -hmm. is an interesting mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon. And back in the, this was would be in the 80s, I was asked by the head of the Department of Psychology at uh, University of Georgia mm -hmm. to do uh, an interview, and he was doing a series of interviews with people about consciousness. Mm -hmm. 
and there were he had three cameramen and a makeup person. I never had been in an environment like this, mm -hmm. and the, and so and a makeup person was putting you know makeup mm -hmm. on to, for the light and making sure that everybody was mm -hmm. there. And there was a recording engineer with very complex equipment, and I'll never forget it. So I do this interview, and so um, he says, "Will you, Tom? Will you give us a demonstration now with mm -hmm. the, the crystal bowl and this Hathor energy?" And I mm -hmm. say, "Sure." So I'm doing my bowl thing, mm -hmm. and I psychically see the energy go into the camera that's locked directly mm -hmm. in front. Uh -huh. And on either side, the energy's not going into those cameras. And I thought, right. well, that's kind of weird. Right. So because then when you're in alpha, you can uh, be aware of things mm -hmm. in the environment that you're not if you're in a deeper, right. lower brain state. I saw the energy go in straight into the camera. Mm -hmm. And the guy who was operating the camera was from La Jolla. Mm -hmm. He was a surfing dude with long blonde hair. Mm -hmm. And after it was over, I swear to God, he went, Dude, he fell back against the wall and slid down to the floor <laughs> and said, that was awesome. <laughs> and I hear a scream from the audio booth. And the audio engineer just said, you won't, and he was shaking, you won't believe this. On the oscilloscope, I saw your crystal ball. The uh -huh. shape of your crystal ball appeared on my oscilloscope. Wow. Ever the skeptic, because I always reference logic in yeah. altered states, I said, well, let's do an experiment. Let's run the videotape back and run it forward and let's see if it shows up again, because I was curious, mm -hmm. would it show up again? So, no, it didn't. It didn't show it up. It did not show up. So uh -huh. I think what happened was, he became, the audio engineer listened to the sound, he didn't see what was going on, uh -huh. and he entrained and entered an altered state in himself uh -huh. and hallucinated. Or, the or, or saw a higher level. Or from a higher level, level I could level. say. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting quandary when you're, you know. Yeah. Something yeah. happened yeah. that did not show up again mm. when we ran the videotape through. Right. So the field effect of the sound, the field effect was operating external to the video. Mm. So what I'm saying is that the, 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 when I'm doing sound work, there's this field effect that moves out mm -hmm. and has, it's, it's a vibrational field that is so high there is no sound. In ancient mm. traditions it's called the unheard sound. Just means it's a very high vibration. That's moving out and affecting people. So the sound actually did not create a change in the But it was the energy. It, it was, was the energy. It yeah. was affected by the field effect of yeah. the energy field going out. And that's wow. what happens when I work. My personal experience is that there's the sound that comes through me, uh -huh. and there's also an energy field that emanates out uh -huh. from my field. So where do you see your work, the Hathor? Where is it, where is it leading all of this? And the new consciousness, where are we going? <laughs> Well, it's a complex, for no, me personally. I, yeah, where are you going for you personally? I'm exploring at a m far deeper level than I ever imagined the relationship between the male and female. Oh. And the dyadic energy between myself and my wife, Judy. Uh -huh. And the doors that it's opening up. Uh -huh. And then that is like moving into a deeper understanding of the relationship between myself as a man mm -hmm. and a woman that I love mm -hmm. and what that opens up and what, ter what territory in myself that I've never looked at before and don't want to look at, mm. how it opens, gives me an opportunity eh -eh. <laughs> 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 to become aware of and transform and the power that that possesses. Can you share a little bit of, I mean, I'm curious, because un unless you don't want to, unless no, it's no, too personal, I'm, I'm curious so. about that territory it's opening up in you, because it's, it's new. Something happens when a person lives with a woman of power. I think women are confined by our society. Mm -hmm. There's only the template of the virgin, the holy virgin, or the whore. Right. Well, I think there's that's changing. With yes, the, but, I, I don't know what the percentage would be, but there's yeah. a deep template that mm -hmm. women, if they're powerful, they're bitchy, they're whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's no permission for a woman to express herself the bandwidth, let's put it this way, the bandwidth socially mm -hmm. for a woman to express herself is narrower mm -hmm. than it is for men. Yeah. I men have a narrow bandwidth, especially around openness, emotional vulnerability. How do you be a man? 
and mm -hmm. still have softness and openness, and very importantly, how do you as a man remain male mm -hmm. and pay attention to the relationships between people around you and take that in as part of the equation instead yeah. of stepping forward as the alpha ape and right. banging your chest. Right. How do we so, develop a sensitive emotional body? In, and, yes, and, as a man. And, and, yeah. That's our journey. That is. But women have to, their journey, many of them, yeah. is how do they free themselves up to be their true power. So. Yeah. To answer your question, the cauldron, the foundry of the relationship mm. between a woman of power mm -hmm. and myself mm. is the most transformational experience. On your I've, personality. On, on my personality. Uh -huh. And then there are other areas that I'm looking at in terms of biophotonics and uh -huh. um, transgenetics. Those are all coming forward to me as well. That's what I'm working on. That's what the three realms. No, I think it's really interesting because when you when there is a merging male female, there is a I think there is the potential for a biophotonic emanations on yes. level. I think that's the Jer Jesus and Mary Magdalene story right. that was written about. Is that so? That's exciting. That yes. that level of work and um, it's exciting. It's challenging. It's profound. It's intense. It's everything. <laughs> So that's you, and then you're working in that as your own self-development area. I mean, right, and then I'm exploring um, the fundamental precepts of Dzogchen. Of Dzogchen, Tibetan is, Dzogchen. Yeah, and, there, and how that view is so, so compatible with quantum mechanics and mm. um, that whole field effect, mm. and so that's of intense interest for me. What about your work with the Hathors? Do you feel like you are getting to know them, be I mean, it's what, 35 years, but are they personality oh, yeah. types? There's and 13 that I work with. And do you know each one of them? Yep. And do you feel like you're getting closer to them somehow? Or are they, what are they I'm like? As, I'm as close as I want to get. Let's put you don't want to get closer? <laughs> well, what I mean uh, is there's... You want to have a drink with them. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, a, a light drink. Uh, but, uh, no, what are they like as a, as they uh, are personal. the 13, there's millions in the civilization, I'm told. All right. The 13 that I work with, I see clairvoyantly, I hear mm. clairaudiently. Each Again, and you each recognize one. the individuals? Each one, but there's one that's the most intelligent. Okay. And that's the one I talk to. I won't tell and the others. <laughs> no, they all know this, and, and he, they all defer to him. But it's interesting, when they are giving a message, mm -hmm. and after the message, I sometimes ask, Judy and I ask questions, mm -hmm. Enum will pause and say, um, we have to enter conference right now, right. a consensus. They disagree with each other. Oh, That's what's really interesting. Oh, that is interesting. And they have said before that when you enter higher dimensions, it's not that everything is all wonderful and perfect. Mm. It's just that you're at a different vibratory rate and you have opportunities that you don't have at a lower level of vibration, mm. but there's still challenges. And so they mm. actually have disagreements. Oh, and so they will sometimes will sit for several minutes, nothing's going on because they're talking amongst themselves. <laughs> sometimes I listen in and sometimes I don't. But, you know, I think that's really fascinating. You're, I mean, you're in a unique position developing a real relationship with these beings. But, aren't, I mean, I kind of asked it before, are we there to enter those dimensions and, and converse with those beings as well? Like all of us as a civilization, aren't, aren't we moving to that place? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, I mean, the Hathers have said that we are in a evolutionary projectile uh -huh. or projection, and that we are the seed of a new type of humanity. So that's what's happening now. Right. Genetic mutations are taking place that are changing the human nature, and they say that we will enter a place where collectively people will be aware of other beings, mm -hmm. other dimensions, other realities, time and space will be perceived in a much more fluid manner than we do now. They call that the fifth state. Mm -hmm. And some people are already there. Well, but collectively, the Hathers say, we're moving there as a wave, but mm -hmm. we haven't. But there's a point in the future where the majority of people will have a day-to-day -day experience of other dimensionality, other beings, other realms of existence, while still being alive in a body. Do they say how much in the future that is? No. 
But yeah, but in no a way, way, you're you're there in in when you go into those states. You're part of that. You're leading. Yeah, many people yeah. watching this probably yeah. are right in those states when they enter an altered awareness. But we have to overcome so much of the dogmatism of our religions, our education, our psychology. Oh God! Our yes, it's a box. And yeah. because those beings, I mean, as you talk to them, I, there's a sense of something. You know, there's they might not be here the way you see them, but you know, as you as we reference those realities, I could sense a greater space opening up. Yes. I mean, you can sense that too. Oh, yes. And so, but that's not always there. But we're developing a kind of higher sense of that awareness, multidimensional awareness. Um, well, it's uncomfortable when we say we and okay, everyone we, is doing I that. mean we, I mean the, some of us, thank you, at the leading or want to are are developing a facility that you've developed to access those. Right, I think um, it's an innate human capacity. Yeah, okay. But I think what we're experiencing as the collective is something called the bell curve. Mm. And so you have this bell shape and people enter collectively and yeah. experience. Some of us enter it sooner than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And in, we're the explorers, the adventurers. But it's very strange to be to have direct experiences of things that the collective is saying, this is nonsense. Right. Well, you know, back in, it was like, it was in the early 1800s, the Royal Society of England said it is impossible for man to travel over 35 miles an hour. Right. But well, we cannot bear the mm -hmm. strain of that, and that was science. Mm -hmm. So even science is constantly evolving and changing. Mm -hmm. So the, my, my point in this is that the bell curve phenomenon applies here. So the Hathers say that we are entering collectively this bell curve, and there'll be a point in the future where most human beings will have a direct experience of the interdimensional nature of reality, and mm -hmm. they will have interactions with beings from other realms, and mm -hmm. that's no big deal, it's just part of life. Mm -hmm. But right now, mm -hmm. the, the bulk of people do not have that experience, and it's only the people at the beginning of the bell curve mm -hmm. But it's getting more and more people are switching on. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think the key is neurophysiology that, that you've studied because you seem to be actually using your brain uh, in, a, <laughs> no, in a different way, <laughs> in a different way mm -hmm. to, or you've tapped into a way of using this receiver to access those realms that in a way should be available to everyone, but you, it's some, can you talk about what you think is going on neurophysiologically in, ac I mean, it's an alpha state, but is there a new place in the brain or an untapped area of the brain that sort of channels? Is there something like that, or am I just making it up? No, 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 <laughs> no, you're not making it up. This is a very exciting time in the brain sciences because yeah. there's so many people working uh -huh. with the brain that, uh, new discoveries are just like rolling mm -hmm. out almost every day. Mm -hmm. There's There are more neurons in the brain than the number of stars in the known universe. That's amazing, the new neuron connections that are possible, yeah. Right, yes. and so there's a tremendous potential in that. So to answer your question, one of the areas that has been looked at is the orientation area. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Andrew Newberg has oh, looked yeah. at this and basically it, sh it shows that when you enter a meditative state, the orientation area pays attention to time and space. Mm -hmm. So that when, when you walk across the room, it takes in all the sensory information and creates a map mm -hmm. of the external space so you don't bump into a wall or a table. But when you go into a meditative state, the orientation area stops mm. mapping because there's nothing to map. Right. So then it starts to map internal space. Oh. And that becomes much more fluid, and the perception is that time can expand. What do you mean by internal no space, time. though? I mean, tell me. Well, a person can, in meditation, feel like they're floating. Oh, okay. Or they can be in a vast uh, space. Mm -hmm. All types of things happen in meditation. So the orientation area is involved in this. Some people say we're not even in the brain. The brain is a receiver, but who we are, I mean, Bruce Lipton says this, are, are, is the signal. We're not the receiver, we're the signal right. being sourced mm -hmm. through the receiver. So do you go along with that or? I, yes, so but I always go back and look at the, if you talk to all the neuro, if you got all the neuropsychologists and neurologists mm -hmm. and neuroscientists in the world together, yes. the consensus would be no, that's not what's happening. It's just 
brain function. It's just mm -hmm. brain function. Mm -hmm. So science is evolving itself. And we'll see, I think, this recognition that there's something beyond the brain mm -hmm. that's non-localized, and we'll be able to document it. But mm -hmm. right now, science is not at that place mm -hmm. as, a, as a, a consensus. Well, no, it's all very exciting. I mean, I, we're moving into an amazing future, yes. and I appreciate you being on the edge, and and you keep looking at yourself, which is so great. You're, you, you, if I stop looking at myself, yeah, and then I'm lost. Yeah, but you don't let yourself off the hook. You keep going. <laughs> in a, in a good and if way. I let myself off the hook, <laughs> my wife will make sure that I am attending to what I need to pay attention. To. Yeah. So what do you? But no, I think it's great because you know you. You're s very serious about this. I mean, and you have a, and you have something really special that's happening because you are, you know, a student of consciousness. Mm -hmm. 